Hi, I'm Dr. Chad Larson. We're going to continue our series today on uh, talking about nutrients. Um, there's some really key nutrients that we've talked about in the recent past, like zinc and vitamin C and vitamin D. And although these are, com these are common and you've probably heard of them before, hopefully I added a little extra information that maybe you didn't know about for these. So certainly go back and uh, listen to those episodes. But today we're going to talk about a nutrient that um, maybe some of you have not heard of. It's called N-acetylcysteine or NAC. NAC is a very unique nutrient. I use it frequently in clinical practice and I'll talk about kind of the three main ways and reasons why I use this very, very important nutrient. But what is it? N-acetylcysteine is a, it's an amino acid. In fact, the amino acid component of NAC is called L-cysteine. And then to make it into a supplement, they have to add the N-acetyl uh, component to it. So that's why it's called N-acetylcysteine. But cysteine is, um, it's what we consider an uh, semi-essential amino acid. So just to contrast that with an essential amino acid, essential amino acids are uh, nutrients or amino acids that we can't live without and the body can't make it. So we have to get it from an outside source like diet or uh, nutritional supplementation. And acetylcysteine or cysteine being um, a semi-essential amino acid, it could actually be manufactured by other amino acids. And so that's why it's considered a semi-essential. It's essential for the body. We can't live without cysteine, but since it can be made by these other amino acids, that's why it's considered uh, semi-essential. But it's really important uh, nutrient that I want to talk about kind of three main ways that I use it and three main uh, sort of key attributes that this nutrient uh, provides for us. By far at the top of the list is that it's a precursor to the most important antioxidant in your system called glutathione. Glutathione is like your antioxidant superhero. It's on, in all your cells, it's probably most abundant in the liver, which, um, you know, the liver just has a gazillion jobs that it has to deal with. And so because it deals with so much, um, sort of detoxification all pretty much happens in the liver. Part of the process of detoxification is um, oxidation production or oxidative stress. And so glutathione is the key antioxidant that helps to quench this type of oxidative damage that the liver has to kind of balance all the time, every day, all day long. So glutathione is the key amino acid uh, excuse me, the key antioxidant that um, is produced in the liver and uh, most other cells in the body. And cysteine is what we call the rate limiting amino acid in glutathione production because it's a what we call a tripeptide. There's two other amino acids that contribute to glutathione production. They are um, uh, um, glycine and uh, glutamine. So glycine, glutamine, and cysteine are what the body requires in order to manufacture glutathione. Glycine and glutamine, uh, or excuse me, uh, glycine um, and uh, yeah, glutamine are a lot more abundant in the diet. Cysteine is a little less abundant, which is why we call it the rate limiting amino acid in the production of uh, a glutathione. So we can get some cysteine from the diet. There's certain foods like animal proteins for the most part that have this amino acid in it. Like I said before, it can be uh, manufactured by other amino acids, but for certain situations, the dose that we need to provide the body is gonna be best uh, um, acquired through nutritional supplementation. And this form of cysteine um, and acetylcysteine is I think the most efficient way to really boost these levels. So its ability to help uh, pretty significantly ramp up glutathione levels in the body is the number one reason why I prescribe NAC. Um, it's a great way to just provide the body very quickly with this very key cofactor and building block for glutathione. So glutathione we've talked about in, kind of weaved it in multiple episodes because it's such an important antioxidant. And one of the liver's main jobs is to help to sort of detoxify the body. So the liver has to deal with all these toxins that float through the, um, the liver and the rest of the body. All kind of has to get filtered ultimately through the liver and glutathione is so key to help make sure that happens. Also, we know that glutathione is supposed to be abundant 
in the brain because many of the neurodegenerative conditions that we're all concerned about today have as part of their mechanism inflammation and oxidation. And if we can have enough glutathione in the body, that can help to really quench some of that uh, free radical damage that leads to that kind of neuro, uh, neurodegeneration. So for multiple reasons and mechanisms of the body, it's so key to make sure that a person's uh, glutathione levels are, are, um, are at the right level. And so I test uh, glutathione frequently in my office with a whole variety of, of, of situations. And I also test right along with it, cysteine. So I know um, exactly um, who needs glutathione um, and who needs cysteine. If I see that both levels of cysteine and glutathione are low or even just suboptimal, I know that I could provide uh, N-acetylcysteine, boost up their cysteine, and that will allow them to uh, also boost up their levels of glutathione. So that's sort of the number one reason why I recommend and prescribe uh, NAC. But you know, a close second is its ability to be mucolytic. So muco means mucus, lytic means to like dissolve or break down. So it helps to dissolve and break down mucus, which again, um, one of the reasons why I'm featuring this nutrient because it has attributes that no other nutrient to my knowledge has. And so being able to boost up glutathione and act as a mucolytic is just a really fantastic combination of attributes that this nutrient has. And so um, the way it works is mucus is really, has this really tightly uh, cross-linked uh, glycoproteins that make mucus kind of thick and can make it very difficult for people with upper respiratory issues to help express and uh, release that, that built up um, mucus. And it can really be, um, it can really ex ex exacerbate a person's um, symptoms, upper respiratory symptoms. So using NAC as a mucolytic, what it does is it breaks down these disulfide bonds that cause this really tight uh, cross-link in these, in these mucosal um, glycoproteins. So that's a very unique attribute that NAC has, is to work as this mucolytic by breaking down these disulfide bonds. So mucolytic effect, I frequently recommend for a whole variety of upper respiratory issues. We're going into flu season right now. We're already in a global pandemic that seems to kind of target the upper respiratory system. So it's something that we should, you know, all kind of have in our medicine chest and be able to pull it out when necessary. I'd say the third thing um, that uh, NAC is really good for is as uh, general uh, liver support. Um, remember I already mentioned that it helps with glutathione production. One of the main areas in the body where we really need to bolster our glutathione levels is in the liver. And in fact, it's so well known as a liver support for detoxification is when a person uh, sort of overdoses on acetaminophen, which is the main uh, drug in Tylenol. So it's not that hard to, um, uh, it's a pretty toxic drug and it can be very therapeutic at the right doses, but it can also be very toxic if you exceed those therapeutic doses. And um, it's known to really um, start to destroy the liver pretty quickly. So in those situations, there's good literature that explains that um, if a person takes, uh, or if a doctor you know, prescribes, oftentimes happens in the emergency room, if they're given um, uh, N-acetylcysteine, it'll really help to decrease the toxic damage to the liver by giving them uh, N-acetylcysteine if they've, um, if they've taken too much acetaminophen and they're in sort of toxic levels. So that's a real world uh, example of how NAC really helps to target and support the liver in this like heavy duty antioxidant sort of way. So. Uh, you know, and those are obviously done at the um, hospital level and that needs to be um, kind of overseen by a medical professional. But it's fascinating that even at the lower levels that it can give you some good general liver support. So if I'm treating a patient and they have, um, you know, something like NAFLD, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, and we're treating that and we're treating the underlying metabolic syndrome sort of mechanism to that, oftentimes we'll use NAC as good as a good like general liver tonic because we know it really helps to boost up the glutathione levels um, in the liver and help to decrease inflammation and oxidation. So those are the, the key three sort of attributes that I really use um, NAC for in my practice as a precursor 
building block for glutathione as uh, support for um, upper respiratory um, sort of mucus production. So it's used as a mucolytic substance and also for liver support and de detoxification in the liver. So again, these are three attributes that I can't really think of any other nutrient um, can do it quite like uh, N-acetylcysteine can. So hopefully um, you learned something about this nutrient and some ways that you might be able to use it in your own life. So um, check it out, look into it. I will keep reading the studies and bringing you the information. Until then, keep it real.